Let's have a look at the way we can add two fractions and we're going to start off with the easy case of when we have fractions that have the same denominator. In other words, the same thing in the bottom of the fraction. If we have two sixths plus one sixth, then what we're doing if we draw a picture is the following. We have got two sixths. That means we have taken our chocolate bar, our fizz or whatever, divided it up into six pieces and we are taking two of them. And then we're going to add or get another one of those pieces. And the pieces are exactly the same size, so it's easy to add them. We've got two of this size piece. We've got another one of this size piece. So if we put it together, we'll get a picture like this. which shows that we have one, two, three of those little pieces which are all the size of a sixth. In other words, we've got two sixths, we've got another sixth. All together, we will have three sixths. That's very nice and easy. Let's just simplify that down a bit. Three sixths, if we just have a look at this picture here, we should be able to see quite easily that three sixths is really just the same as one half. Okay, let's have a look at another example. This one I want you to try. Open your homework books and quickly do one eighth plus three eighths, drawing it in a diagram first and then getting the answer. Pause the video now and do it. Okay, your answer should be something like this. One eighth plus three eighths. Here you've got one eighth. There you've got the three eighths. Put them all together and you get one, two, three, four of the eighths. Four eighths is just the same again this time as one half. So we can write it that way too. So we see that adding with the same denominator is very easy. If we have two sixths minus one sixth. Again, we're going to have our little fizz bar, chocolate, whatever, cut up into six pieces. And if we've got two sixths of them, that means we've got one, two of those little pieces. Then if we subtract one sixth, what that means is we take one sixth away. In other words, we just take one of those sixths away and we can see quite easily two sixths, take away one of them, is just going to give me one sixth. Very easy. The last thing I want to show you with this, we've seen it's incredibly easy to do this addition and subtraction if we've got the same denominator. What happens if we're given a mixed number? My advice to you is going to be, if we are given a mixed number, we should always, always just turn it into an improper fraction and then do our additional subtraction. And that'll make it easiest for us. So, Let's turn three, two and two thirds into an improper fraction. Remember how we do this? We say two times three is six, plus this two gives me eight, so we have eight over three. And then when we do one and two thirds, turning it into an improper fraction, we say one times three is three, and then we add on the two, three plus two gives me 5 over 3. Now we're back in the same situation which I have just shown you and that's really easy. You've got 8 of these third pieces and you've got to add on 5 of the third pieces. Well you've got 8 and 5 is 13 so your answer is 13 over 3. And if you want to you can convert that back into a mixed number. 3 goes into 13 four times with one third remaining. Okay. Okay, I want you now to open your homework books and just try and do this little example. 3 and a quarter minus 1 and 3 quarters. Turn them into improper fractions first and then do the subtraction. Pause the video now and do it. Okay. Let's check. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 gives me 13, so this is 13 over 4. 
and then one and th three quarters. One times four is four, plus three is seven. That's seven over four. So now I've got 13 quarters, and I'm taking away seven quarters. Well, 13 minus seven just gives me six, which is six quarters. And I can turn that into a mixed number. Four into six goes once and two fourths. And of course, two fourths, two quarters is just a half. So your answer is one and a half.